Hi everyone, today in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can make a food delivery website for your business, for your restaurant. And here you can sell almost any kind of products. Let's say pizza, you can sell burgers, you can sell desserts and any kind of fast food on your website. And the good part is that you can also accept the online payments. The best thing about this video is that if you don't know even a single line of code, then also you can make a fully featured e-commerce store for your restaurant where you can list out any kind of of product so let me show you what exactly we are going to build today so that you can take a decision whether this video is going to be helpful or not so this is the website that we are going to build today in this video that has a beautiful header and this header is much relevant to the restaurant business here we have the call to order number in the header we have a beautiful logo then we have an Amazon type product search box where if you type any keyword let's say cheese so it will automatically display all the products relevant to this keyword so I'm just making the spelling correct. That is cheese. You can see it is automatically showing all the products relevant to this cheese keyword. Then we have this menu card. When you hover on it, it displays no products in the card. As soon as you will be adding more products, they will be showing over here. And then we have these kind of menus. These are basically product categories. When someone click on pizza, it will be redirected onto the pizza product category. We'll come to this part later on. Then we have created this kind of section. You can see over here, this section looks really awesome. We have placed a big pizza image. This is what we called shaped divider. As you can see over here, it's a curved shaped divider. We have created the buttons with the hover effect as well. And then we have created this kind of section with some top margins, some, you know, negative margins over here. And then we have created this kind of icon boxes along with some kind of text. And then again, we have created this kind of thing you can see over here. They have the animation effect as well. When you mouse over, the images moves upward. So we are going to make a section something like this. Then we have created this kind of section as well. We have placed a gallery with the Instagram button over here. So when someone click on this button, they will be redirected on the Instagram page. And then we have created this kind of section that has the options for the people to download Android app or the iOS app. And then we have created this kind of custom footer that has the uh, you know subscription box, the social media icon. Uh, the store address the links of the legal pages and there are so many things that we have created on this home page after that once we jump on to this pizza uh, product page you can see we have designed this page as per our requirement that means it's a custom designed page where we have placed some kind of banner advertisements we have created the sidebars and these products are listed out automatically whenever you will be creating the products from the back end they will automatically be displayed on the pizza page or in their own respective product category then we have also placed this kind of custom, uh, you know, banner over here. Let's click on one of the pizza product and we are going to open the single product page. We have also designed the single product page and this is something similar to the one that we have on the Domino's website. Uh, this is the pizza product you can see over here that is the price ranging and then after there are so many options for the user to select like they can order for the regular pizza, they can order for the medium pizza and they can also choose the order type whether it could be dine-in or that could be a takeaway. And then after uh, this section is basically uh, you know relevant to the Domino's website where user can select the you know crust type whether they would like to have the new hand tossed or the 100% wheat thin crust pizza there are separate pricing for each of the crust type then there is an option for the user to choose whether they would like to have the extra cheese on their product or not and then after there are so many toppings option as well like they can add the red pepper or they can add the grilled mushroom as well and then there are some kind of other options like non-veg toppings so either they can choose any one of them or they can choose both the toppings and here you can see that is the total price so user can simply click on add to cart and they can place the order directly onto the website so this is the thing that we are going to build today in this entire video and you can sell almost any kind of fast food product on this website this is going to be a completely pure e-commerce store you can also accept the online payments through credit card debit cards you can manage the shipping and there's so many things that you are going to do in this entire video so if you are new to my youtube channel please subscribe this channel and my name is saddam kasim without wasting much time let's start this video we are going to cover up this entire video tutorial in six simple steps number one buying domain and web hosting number two installing WordPress number three installing themes and all required plugins number four building the entire website number five creating the pizza or fast food as a product and at last integrating the payment options like credit cards debit cards that's it so let's jump on point one that is buying a domain name and web hosting so first of all let's understand what is a domain name and web hosting a domain name is the name of your website, just like google.com, sony.com, amazon.com. 
So when you are launching your own pizza store, you need to have a domain name relevant to your business just like pizza.com or pizzazone.com etc. On the other hand, a web hosting is the web space that puts your website on the internet and makes it live for the global audience. A .com domain name costs around $10 a year whereas a web hosting costs just $2 a month. So let's go ahead and we can buy a domain name and web hosting for our pizza store. There are a lot of companies selling domains and web hosting but I recommend to go ahead with Hostinger as their price is worth and site loading speed is better than others. To buy the domain name and web hosting from Hostinger, you just need to open a website that is saddamkasim.com then forward slash h-o-s-t-i-n-g-e-r Hostinger. This is basically my referral link through which you can get some discount. Along with that, I will also be sharing a discount coupon code through which you can save some extra bucks. Right now, it is showing the price in my local currency. So let's go ahead and we can set the location to United States. Now it is showing the price in US dollars that is $2.99 per month but we don't have to buy this hosting. Firstly you need to just jump on this hosting menu, click on it and here we can see the third menu that is WordPress hosting optimized solution for WordPress hosting. Let's click on it. Okay, now we need to click on start now. Here we have four plans available. The first plan is single WordPress. That means if you are having just one single website, then you can choose this plan that allows you to host one single website. Whereas if you have more than one websites, then you can go ahead with this WordPress starter plan that allows you to host up to 100 websites on just single web hosting plan. So the single WordPress hosting plan offers you to host one website. It offers you 30 GB of SSD storage for your website content. It provides you one business email account, free SSL. SSL means HTTPS security. As you can see over here, this is HTTPS website. That means when someone click on this padlock symbol, it shows connection secure. So this is really a very important feature these days. It keeps your website secure as well as Google recommends all the websites which has HTTPS protocol installed or we can call it as a SSL certificate. This plan doesn't offers you free domain name. So you have to buy a domain name separately. Whereas in the second plan, one free domain name is included. After that, we have a few more features over here, 30 days money back guarantee as well. So let's go ahead and we can choose this plan, single WordPress. Let's click on select. Okay, now it asks you to choose the billing period, whether you would like to get this hosting for just one month that cost around $10. Whereas if you buy it for 12 months, it cost you $4.64 per month. And if you go ahead with the 48 months, then you just need to pay $1.85 a month. So total is around $88.80 for 4 years. So this totally depends on you whether you would like to buy the hosting for 12 months or 4 years. If you go ahead with the 48 months, you can save more whereas with the 12 months, you are paying $55.68 for a year. After that, here we have create an account option. Either you can enter your email address manually in this box or you can simply social login through your Gmail or Facebook account. Then we have this select payment option. So you can choose your own desired payment method whether credit card, PayPal, CoinGate, Google Pay etc. Now at the very bottom we have this kind of order overview box where you can review your order. Single WordPress hosting 12 months plan cost $119.88 but after discount you are paying $55.68. Remember to use this coupon code as well Saddam7. This coupon code can help you to save extra 7% off. So simply fill up this entire form, click on submit secure payment. After the payment is successfully been done then you will be redirected on to the Hostinger dashboard. In case if you are not redirected automatically on the Hostinger dashboard, then you just need to simply open the website that is Hostinger.com. Here we have the login button. Let's click on it and then you can login into your Hostinger account. Your Hostinger dashboard will look something like this. So you have already bought the web hosting and it will appear over here. Right now I am using WordPress starter hosting that has 11 websites hosted right now. Now after purchasing the web hosting, you just need to jump on this domains menu and you have to buy a domain name for your website. So on the left hand side, you would be seeing this kind of menu, get a new domain. Let's click on it. And here we have to search for a domain name of our choice. So this is the domain search box. 
Now let's say you are searching a domain name something like pizza zone 24 by 7.com. Let's click on search button. If no one else has purchased this domain name earlier, then we will be able to buy this domain name. Here you can see this domain name is available. It cost $9.99 a year. You can also choose any other domain extension just like pizza247.online that cost 99 cents a year. But I personally suggest you if you are running a serious business then just go ahead with the .com domain extension. So you need to click on buy now button. It will ask you for the payment. Just make the payment and this domain name will be added in this domains menu. I'm not going to buy the domain name or web hosting because I already own a domain name and the web hosting plan with Hostinger. So here in this video, I'm going to use one of my existing domain that is medihouse.online. Now after purchasing the domain name as well, we need to click on SSL menu and here we have to install the SSL certificate on our domain name. So you would be seeing something like this SSL certificate activation pending setup. Just click on this setup button. Now this pop-up comes up, here you have to select your domain name. After that, we have to click on install SSL. Within a few seconds, the SSL certificate will be installed on the domain name. Okay, so here we can see lifetime SSL 0 SSL active on the domain name. Now our next step is we have to install the WordPress software on the domain name. So you just need to click on the hosting menu over here. And then after we have to jump on the domain name. Okay, so this is the medihouse.online. You have to click on the manage button just next to your domain name. Now this is the panel from where we can install the WordPress software onto our domain name. So you need to scroll down and here we can find the option auto installer. Just click on it. Okay, then again we have to scroll down. Here is the WordPress option. Let's click on select button. A pop-up comes up. Here we have to fill a few details. Let's say website title that could be selling pizza online. Remember, you can change this title anytime from the WordPress dashboard itself. I will let you know in the upcoming few minutes. Then here we have to put the administrator email address. And then after we have to create an administrator username. So I'm just going to create a username that could be saddam789 you can create your own username and the password these username and the password are only for the wordpress login i mean when you will be logging into your wordpress backend panel from where you will be creating the website these login details will be needed then after we need to click on advanced option now here we have to select the https because we have already installed the ssl certificate onto our domain name here the domain name is already selected Make sure do not put anything in this subdirectory box. Keep this box empty. Okay, after that we have to click next. Now, before clicking on this install button, let's go ahead and we can open the domain into a new tab. So here you can see this is a default page by Hostinger. That means there is no website created on this domain name. Now after installing the WordPress, there will be a basic website created. So let's click on this install button and within a few seconds, the WordPress software will be installed onto the domain name that is medihouse.online. Okay, so WordPress has successfully been installed. Now let's go ahead onto the new tab and we can refresh this page. Here we go. So now you can see there is a basic website created after installing WordPress on the domain name. So WordPress is really very very easy to build almost any kind of website. Now you need to understand a few things. Right now we have opened the domain name that is medihouse.online. This is the main domain that anyone can open onto their browser. So this screen is basically called the front end. Whereas when you want to edit this entire page, when you want to create your products, when you want to edit anything on your website, being as an administrator, you need to log in into your WordPress backend panel. So to access the WordPress backend panel, you have to add forward slash WP hyphen admin just after your main domain name. Now it will ask you for the username and the password. By default, my username and the password are auto filled by the browser. So let's click on login. These are the same login details and the password that we have just created when installing the WordPress through the pop-up. Okay, now this screen is basically called the backend panel. You can also call it as the administrator panel from where you can control the entire website. You can create the pages, you can write the blog post, 
you can delete or approve the comments you can change the theme of your website you can install the plugins to add the functionalities in your website you can create other users on your website you can change a few settings of your entire site there are a lot of things that we are going to explore in this entire video now our next step is we have to install a theme and a few plugins now what are themes Themes are basically a package of style sheets that define how exactly your website will look like. Whereas plugins are small softwares or we can call them as the script that helps to add the functionalities or features into your website. So firstly we can install a free theme just hover on the appearance menu and here we can see themes option. Let's click on it. WordPress has thousands of free and premium themes but here we are going to use a free theme. So at the very top, we can see this add new button. Let's click on it. Now in the search themes box, we have to search for ASTRA Astra. Astra is one of the best and free theme. It is very lightweighted theme that loads very fast on your WordPress website. So here we can see the first one Astra. Firstly, you need to install this theme. And after that, we have to activate this theme. Okay, so when you install and activate a new theme, the design interface of your website will be changed. Let's open our website into a new tab. Now here you can see that bird has completely gone and it's a complete new web page. I know it doesn't look good at all, but no worries. In the upcoming few minutes, we are going to make this boring web page into an amazing website. Now let's come back. Okay, our next task is we have to install a few plugins. So to install a plugin, we need to simply jump on plugins and then here we have to click on add new. Now I have created a list of plugins that we need in this entire website to add the features and functionalities. The first plugin that we have to install is Elementor. So in the search plugin box, we have to search for E-L-E-M-E-N-T-O-R that is Elementor. It is a page builder plugin that helps you to create content on the web page without writing codes. It's a 100% drag and drop based page builder. So let's click on install now. And after that, we have to activate this plugin. Okay, so this is the welcome screen of the Elementor. We just need to click on this cross. So this page will be closed. Now we need to install a new plugin that is Elementor Pro. Elementor Pro is the premium version of Elementor that can add more functionalities in your website. With the help of Elementor Pro plugin, you can create custom headers, you can create custom footer, you can create custom product pages and a lot more. So to get the plugin, we just need to simply open a website that is wpscratch.com. Okay, so this is the website from where you can get the Elementor Pro at a huge discounted price. In the search product box, we have to search for E-L-E-M-E-N-T-O-R-P-R-O, Elementor Pro. So that is the first plugin Elementor Pro page builder. Okay, on this website, you can get this plugin for just 10 bucks. Whereas if you directly go on to the Elementor.com, you are getting this plugin for around $49 a year. Let me show you over here. Let's click on pricing. Now let's click on plugin tab. Here we go. So here you can see that is $49 a year. So from WP Scratch, you can save a lot. Just click on add to cart from here. Simply buy this plugin and it will be downloaded in .zip format on your computer. I have already bought this plugin, so I'm not going to buy it again. To install the Elementor Pro plugin, we just need to go back onto the plugins, then click on add new. Now, as the plugin is already downloaded onto your computer, that means you have to upload that plugin in your WordPress website. So here at the very top, we can see upload plugin button. Let's click on it. Then we can browse and locate the plugin onto our computer. So that is the plugin. Let's click on open, install and activate this plugin. Okay, so far we have installed the Elementor and Elementor Pro plugin. Here we can see three extra plugins, Akismet Anti-Spam, Hello Dolly and Lightspeed Catch. So these are a few plugins that auto install and activated onto your WordPress website when you install the WordPress on your domain name. We just need to remove this Akismet Anti-Spam and Hello Dolly. So simply select the checkbox, then go to bulk actions. Here we can find the option delete. Let's just select it and then apply, confirm and these plugins will be deleted. Leave the light speed catch plugin as it is. Now it's time to install the third plugin that is WooCommerce. WooCommerce is a free plugin. Simply click on add new at the very top or you can simply click on add new here. In the search plugin box, we have to search for WooCommerce, all one word. 
Now this is the plugin that can help you to add the shopping cart feature into your WordPress website. So this plugin converts your basic WordPress website into a fully featured e-commerce store. Here we can see it has more than 5 million active installation. That means more than 5 million websites are using WooCommerce today. So let's click on install now and we can activate this plugin as well. Now when you activate the WooCommerce plugin, a setup wizard comes in front of you. So you have to provide a few details in order to make the shopping cart work perfectly with your business. So the first step is store details. You need to enter your store details over here. I mean the address and rest of the things. So let me enter some dummy details over here. Then we can click on continue. On this pop up, you can simply click on no thanks. Now the step number two is industry. In which industry does the store operates? That means the products you are going to sell on your website. Those products belongs to which industry? Either those are health and beauty products, electronics, food and drink or home furniture and garden. So you can choose the appropriate option over here. We are going to make a pizza and fast food website. That means I'm going to choose this food and drink category. Then we can click on continue. Now it asks me the products type. What type of products will be listed? Either those are physical products, downloads, subscriptions, memberships, bookings, bundles or customizable products. So of course pizza is a physical product. Fast food is a physical product that people can touch, they can eat. So physical product is already selected over here. We just need to click on continue again. Now the fourth step is business details. Tell us about your business. How many products do you plan to sell? So at the very beginning, I suggest you to select at least 11 to 100. But this doesn't mean that you cannot sell more than 100 products. You can upload unlimited products on your website. Then after the second option is currently selling elsewhere, just choose no and after that click on continue. Now it will ask you add recommended business features to my site, just uncheck this box. Then click on continue again. Now the last step is choose a theme. So it will ask you to choose other themes. Those are much compatible with the shopping cart. But I recommend you to just go ahead with the current Astro theme because this theme is much better than any other free theme. Okay. So we have successfully set up the entire WooCommerce plugin as well. Now let's go on to the pages section and here we have to create a new page. So here we can see add new link. Just click on it. Now it asks you to add a title of the page. So let's say we can give it a title home. In order to publish this entire page, you just need to click on the publish button at the very top and then again click on publish. Now this page is live. Now by default, the Gutenberg page builder comes with WordPress to create the content. But Gutenberg page builder has a complex interface. You cannot design the page as per your thoughts. So the current interface is basically the Gutenberg page builder interface. So let's go ahead and we can disable this Gutenberg page builder because we have already installed and activated the Elementor and we are going to create the entire page with the help of Elementor page builder. So to go back onto the WordPress dashboard, we just need to click on this WordPress logo on the top left corner. It takes you back to the WordPress dashboard. One more thing I would like to explain you that when you install and activate the WordPress and the WooCommerce plugin, a few pages automatically gets created into your WordPress website. So right now, as we can see over here, the cart page, checkout page, my account page and the shop page. These four pages comes up with the WooCommerce setup wizard, whereas the sample page, refund and returns policy page, privacy policy page comes up with the WordPress installation. And right now we have created this home page manually. Now it's time to disable the Gutenberg page builder. So let's hover on the plugins menu and then we need to click on add new. In the search plugin box, we need to type D I S A B L E disable G U T E N B E R G. That is disable Gutenberg. So the very first plugin is disable Gutenberg by Jeff Starr. Just install and activate this plugin. Okay. Now let's go back to the pages section and we can click on all pages. So this is the list of all the pages which are existing into our WordPress dashboard. Now in order to edit a page, we just need to click on the edit link just below the page title. So right now this is the home page. Let's click on edit. So this is the backend page of the home page. Now you can see the backend panel has completely been changed. The Gutenberg page builder interface has been removed and now we can see edit with Elementor big button over here. Now it's time to create the content on the home page. So we just need to click on edit with Elementor. A new screen will be loaded onto your browser. 
okay so this is the elementor page builder interface from where we can start creating the content onto our page home on the left hand side we can see there are so many widgets available like this is the heading widget if you would like to write a heading you can use this heading widget if you would like to display an image you can use this image widget to display a youtube or vimeo video we can use this widget this is the button widget through which we can create call to action buttons to place an icon this is the icon widget then we have so many other widgets available like this gallery this login slides and so many other useful widgets are available in this elementor and elementor pro plugin now on the right hand side we can see this is the area where we can start designing the home page firstly let's close this navigator pop up okay so this is the area where you can start putting the content you can create the sections you can create the columns you can put the images buttons and rest of the things now i have a dummy website over here this is basically a reference website that we are going to follow today so as you can see in the header there are social media icons then a logo is over here along with the menu items and a call to action button with the name order online after that we have this kind of big background image now when you start building the wordpress website i always suggest you to use the mozilla firefox browser because mozilla firefox browser allows you to use so many helpful features for example if you would like to download this background image in the mozilla firefox browser you can simply right click on that image and here you can see the option open image in new tab just click on it and the background image will be opened into a new tab now right click save image and we can download this image onto our computer that's it so this is the preview of the image in the same way if you would like to download any other image from this page let's say this pizza one right click then save image as and then save it so mozilla firefox provides you a lot of helpful features for a web developer so let's go ahead one by one we can download or save all these images onto our computer because we are going to use these images into our website now you must be having a question in your mind that i am already using someone else images this might be a copyright issue so what i suggest to you that you should use the images from freepick.com f r w -E p i k.com this website can provide you good resolution images free of cost right now i am just downloading the images from this dummy website for explaining the entire website building process okay so all images have been downloaded now let's start creating this kind of section on our website so first of all we need to click on this plus icon now this gives you sections total six structures are available this is the one column structure whereas this is the two column structure in the first column we can put some kind of content like text button whereas in the second column we can put a different kind of content just like images or videos and in the same way you can use the other structures right now i'm just going to use the single column section so we just need to click on it it will appear over here with the blue border here you can see six little dots just right click and then click on edit section so the settings of this particular section will be opened on the left hand side as you can see over here edit section now these settings has three tabs layout style and advanced from the layout tab you can specify the height width and the structure of the section whereas from the style tab you can change the background colors you can set the background image background overlay borders i mean all the styling part can be done from this style tab and from the advanced tab you can set the margins paddings and also you can use the custom css so we'll come to this part later on first of all we have to set a background image to this section so just go on to this style tab and here we can see under the background there is an option background types so right now classic just click on it now this option gives you two possibilities either you can set a background color from this color box or you can set a background image so in our case this is the background image so let's go ahead and we can click on choose image now this pop up comes up here we have two tabs upload files and media library the media library contains all the files that have already uploaded into our website right now we haven't uploaded any file that is the reason there is no image showing over here right now so let's go ahead and we can click on upload files then we need to click on select files okay and let's start uploading that background image so i think this is the image let's click on open now it will show under media library over here okay so that is the image simply scroll down and then click on insert media button 
So this image will be set as the background image of this entire section. Also, we have to do a few more settings like position. So you always have to make it center center. So this will change the position of this background image in this section. Then after repeat should be no repeat and size should be cover. Okay, so these are some of the settings that you always have to do when you are setting a background image to any section. Now just collapse this background tab and we need to jump on background overlay tab. Now background overlay means that we can set a specific color over this background image. So here we can see background type. Let's click on classic. Then this is the color option. From here we have to choose the black color. So you can see that image is getting darkened, right? Like this. Okay, after that we have to put this big heading inside the section. So let's go ahead. First of all, we can copy this entire heading from here. Now come back to the Elementor. In order to write a heading, we need to use the heading widget. So either you can click on this plus icon inside this column or you can simply click on this grid icon. Now all the widgets are visible. To write the heading, this is the heading widget. Just drag it inside this section like this. Okay. When you drop this heading widget, the settings will automatically be opened on the left hand side. In case if you cannot see the settings of this heading widget, simply hover on this heading and here you can see the pencil icon. Right click and then click on edit heading. Now on the left hand side, we can see under the content tab, there is a box title. So here you can type your own heading. I'm just deleting the existing one and we can paste the one that we have already copied from the reference website. Okay, like this. Now we have a few more options available like alignment. You can align it to center. So it will be aligned center inside its own container. Now it's time to change the color of this particular text. So go on to the style tab. As I already told you, the styling part can be done from the style tab. Here we have the text color right now blue. That means it is blue. Let's make it pure white. Okay, like this. Then after we have the option typography. So typography can allow you to change the font family. You can set the font size, font weight and rest of the things. So right now, as we can see on the reference website, we have this authentic Italian pizzeria in a big font. So let's come back to the Elementor. And from here, we can increase the size. Okay, like this, that looks better 80 pixels. After that, we can change the font family from here. But before changing the font family, here we have the option transform. So right now it is default. Let's make it uppercase. The uppercase can make all the letters in uppercase. Whereas if you can choose the lowercase, all the letters will be in the lowercase. So uppercase would be the good option. Now after that, we can change the font family. So right now Roboto is selected. Let's try to choose this Roboto condensed. Okay, that looks fine. Or we can try some other fonts like Oswald. Okay, so this is the exact font that has been used on the reference website. At last, we can click on update. This update button will completely save all the things that we have done on this page. Now it's time to check the front end of this page because this is the editing screen. So let's open the new tab. We can refresh it once again and now we can click on home menu. Here we go. So this is the section that we have created so far. Now let's go ahead and we can put this kind of text. So let's copy it from here first. Okay. Now this is basically the paragraph text. So in the Elementor, we have a new widget available that is text editor. Just drop it below the heading. Now this text editor can be used to put the paragraph text. So its settings has already been opened on the left hand side. Let's remove the dummy text and we can paste the same text that we have already copied. Now it's time to align the entire text to center. So here we have the toolbar toggle option. Now inside it you can see this align center option. Okay. Now it's time to change the color of this particular text. So go on to the style and here we have the text color option. Let's make it pure white. After that, we need to jump on the typography and here we can choose the font family to Oswald again or let's put it back to open sense. This font is best for the paragraph text. That looks fine. Now it's time to click on update. Okay. Now let's refresh our front page. Here we go. So this is how the text looks like. Now let's go back to the reference website. Here we can see two buttons are available. The first one is book a table and second one is take away. So let's start creating this kind of button as well. Now, first of all, we need to click on this grid icon. Now it's time to take an inner section. Inner section means a section inside a section. So let's drop this inner section over here. 
okay this is the inner section when you drop the inner section by default it contains two columns this is the first column and this is the second column so in the first column we can click on this plus the widget list are again appearing over here just drop this button widget now on the left hand side the button settings are opened let's check it out book a table is the text so here we can see text field is available we can put here book a table okay now in the link box we can put a page link so later on we will putting a link over here right now i'm just leaving it as it is and alignment should be right so this button will be aligned right inside its own container it's time to change the button color to red so let's go on to the style tab here we have the button option this is the normal state a button has two states normal state and hover state normal state means right now as i'm seeing the button but when i put the mouse on it then this could be the hover state so right now in the normal state the color is green let's make it red okay so this will make the button red okay now it's time to change the font family of this button text so go on to this typography option and here we can increase the font weight to 600 or you can make it 700 along with that we can also increase the size of the button text okay that looks fine when you are confirmed that this button is okay then we can simply duplicate this entire button just right click on this button and here is an option duplicate just click on it and this button has completely been duplicated now it's time to drop this button in the right column so just put your mouse on this pencil drag and then drop it in the right column that's it now it's time to edit this second button so right click on this pencil icon click on edit button okay its settings has been opened on the left hand side first of all we have to change the alignment of this button at the moment the alignment is right let's make it left okay after that let's come back to the reference website the text is take away so let's change the text to take away okay after that we have to understand the styling of this button the background is transparent the borders are white but when we hover on it the background becomes white and text becomes black so let's make a button something similar to this firstly we need to jump on the style tab and here we can see color is red to make this button transparent just use this bar and put the slider over here so the button background is completely transparent now it's time to set the border to this button so here we have the border option right now the border type is none let's make it solid okay and we can set the border width to 2 pixels after that we need to jump on the hover state this is the hover state option right now if you put mouse on it nothing happens so at the hover state we need to change the background color to white i mean when someone put the mouse on the button the background color should be white so on the hover state we have to set the background color to be white let's make it white and then after on the hover state the text color should be black let's make it black that's okay now let's try to hover on this button here we go so this is how the background color changes also we have to set the border color to white on the hover state so here we have the border color let's make it white now let's try once again perfect it's time to update this page now let's refresh our front page here we go so this is how we have created two buttons a heading we have set up the background image to a section and some text now it's time to increase the height of this particular section because here we can see the height is too much so let's go back to the elementor go on to the section settings now on the left hand side under the layout tab here we can see an option height right now it is default let's set it to minimum height okay so minimum height is right now by default 400 pixels you can increase the minimum height up to 700 okay it's time to click on update once again whenever you make a change onto your web page i always recommend you to update that page that will save all the changes permanently and you will not lose your work now let's refresh our front page here we go so this looks similar to the one that we have on this reference website now it's time to put this kind of curve just below the section and we have to put this big pizza image so let's go back to the elementor now again we need to go on to the section settings under the style tab here we can find out an option shaped divider just click on it also we can scroll down this area now 
we have to put a curve just below it over here. That curve is basically called the shaped divider. Now shape divider can be set up either at the top or at the bottom on a section. So here we have two options, top and bottom. Would you like to set the shaped divider to the top of this section? Of course not. We have to jump on the bottom and then here we can select a shaped divider style. Now let's try this waves. You can see this is how it looks like. In the same way, you can choose any other styling, let's say curve. Okay, so this is the curve. Now we have the option over here, invert under the shaped divider. Let's click on yes. So this is how it looks like. It's time to click on update. And now we can refresh our front page. Here we go. So this is how this section looks like. It's really very, very simple when you start building the website with the Elementor. It's all depends on your practice. Now, to put this big pizza image, we need to take another section. Let's click on this plus once again. Then we can take this one column section. So this is a new section. Let's click on this plus and we need to take an inner section inside it. Okay, so inner section always comes with two columns. Let's delete the second column. To delete a column, just put the mouse on this icon, right click and then delete. Now we have one column inner section inside an outer section. It's time to click on this plus. Now to display the pizza, we have to use the image widget. So here we have the image widget. Just drop it inside the inner section like this. Okay, this is the placeholder and the settings of this entire image widget has been opened on the left hand side. It's time to click on choose image, go on to the upload files. It's time to select file and this is the pizza image. Let's click on insert media. Okay, so that's the big pizza. Now it's time to set the image size. Let's make it full and alignment should be center. Now we have to overlap this pizza image to this section. Now it is very important for you to understand that every element has a margin at the top, bottom, left and right. Margin is basically a kind of extra space around an element. So this image also has some kind of margin at the top. Now let's jump on the advanced tab and here we can see top, right, bottom and left margin options are available. First of all, we have to uncheck this icon because if you will keep this icon selected, then increasing one value will increase the other values as well. That means all the values are dependent on each other. So let's first of all uncheck this icon. Now, if you increase the top margin, you can see the gap is increasing. In the same way, if we decrease the margin to zero, this pizza image is still not overlapping to the top section. So what we can do, we can set the top margin in negative. So you can see it's moving up now. Okay, let's set it to 195 and then we can update this page. Now it's time to refresh our front page. Here we go. So this looks exactly the same that we have on this reference website. Now it's time to create these three columns over here along with the image, then the heading and some text. So let's go back to the Elementor. Now just below this pizza image, we have to take another inner section. So as I already told you, the good thing about Elementor is that you can duplicate any element. So here we are going to duplicate the entire inner section. This is the inner section. Just right click and then duplicate. So the image has also been duplicated. Right click and then delete this image. Now we have a fresh inner section over here. Right now this inner section has just one single column. We have to add two more columns. So right click on the column icon and here we can find the option add new column. Again, we have to add one more column. So total three columns we have over here. Now let's click on the plus in first column and here we have to drop an image. Okay, now it's time to set an image. So just go on to this choose image option. We can jump on the upload files. And here I have three images. I'm just uploading all three images at once by holding the control key of my keyboard. Meanwhile, these images are uploading. Let's check out what is the first one. This is the first image. I think I have uploaded the wrong image. Let's go back, upload files. And I think this is the image. Yes, that was the image. Let's click on insert media. It appears over here. Always you have to set the image size to full and alignment should be center. Now, the original orientation of this image is a square. We have to make it circular or rounded just like this. So let's go back to the Elementor. We have to go on to this style tab. And here we can find out a new option border radius. You have to just increase all the border radius values. 
and you can see the image is now getting rounded. Here we go. So this is the complete circular image that we have created just now with the help of border radius option. This option adds the curve on all the corners of your element. Now it's time to put a heading that is fresh ingredients. Let's copy it from here. Now what we can do actually, we have to just duplicate this big heading from here, just duplicate it and then we can drop it in the bottom section or bottom column. So how we can do that, firstly we can put it over here and then again drop it over here and at last like this. After that we have to change the text from here. Okay, fresh ingredients have been written. Now let's jump on the style tab and we have to change the text color to pure red. Okay, after that we have to decrease the font size. So here it is 80. Let's make it something like 30. Yeah, that looks fine. After that we have some paragraph text over here. Just copy it. We can come back and here again we have this paragraph text. Just duplicate it from here. Then again we can drop it. Okay. After that we can change this entire text and then we can change the text color from here. So let's make it gray. That looks okay. At last we can click on update and then we can refresh our front page. Here we go. So this is how we can create this kind of section as well. Now let's create the remaining two in a very fast mode. How we can do that? Just delete the second column delete the third column as well. Now it's time to duplicate this entire column like this. Elementor allows you to create the sections very fast. Right. Now let's go back to the second image and we can change this image. Let's go back to the upload files. And I think this is the second image. Insert media. That's it. It's time to change the text. Right now it is handmade mozzarella. Okay. Let's replace this heading. And third image could be this one. Okay, insert media. Let's change the heading as well. Here we go like this. Now as you can see over here on the reference website, the first one and the third one are shifted a little bit at the top and middle one is still at its own original position. So what we can do actually, we can decrease the top margin of this particular first column and the third column. Let's do that. Go on to this column setting, then jump on the advanced. First of all, uncheck this link values together icon and then we can decrease the top margin. Like this, 72 is best. In the same way, we need to jump on the third column go on to the advanced, uncheck this icon and make it minus 72. Okay, now it's time to go on to the middle column and here we can increase top margin. So let's increase it a little bit. Okay, now we can update this page. Let's refresh the home page. Here we go. So now we have created it exactly the one that we have on the reference website like this. See how easy it is. Now it's time to create this kind of section. Let's go back to the Elementor and here we can take another section. Okay, now we have to jump on the section settings and we have to set a background image. So under the style tab again we have to go on to this classic option of background. Then here we can choose an image. Let's go on to the upload files, select files and this is the image. Let's click on open and then insert media. After that again you have to change a few settings like position should be center center, repeat should be no repeat and size should be cover. Now let's go ahead and we can set a background overlay on this background image. Just collab this tab and we can click on this background overlay tab. Here we have to choose the classic option and then go on to the color option. Now let's make it black. Okay. Now it's time to take inner section inside this section. So click on this plus. Then here we have the inner section, just drop it over here. Now it's time to duplicate this heading again. Right click, duplicate and then drop it inside the first column like this. After that we have to copy this text from here. Let's copy it. Okay, then go back to the Elementor and here we can change this entire heading. Also we have to change the alignment to left. Then go on to the style tab and here we have to change the text color to white. 
now it's time to increase the font size so let's increase the font size from here now let's go back to the reference website here we can check what font size they are using just right click on it then go on to the inspect element okay here under this section you will be seeing a font size so this is the font size that is 3.7 rem let's go back to the elementor and it seems the font size should be something like this also we have to change the line from here so let's change the line here we have to add an html tag that is br tag that breaks the line then again we have to add the same tag over here okay so this is bringing happiness to you now if you can see over here the bringing happiness and to you they have some extra gap in between so let's go on to the style and under the typography here we can see the line height option let's increase the line height from here like this so from here you can control the line height in between all the lines or all the text that has been written inside a heading cool now let's duplicate this text editor okay let's drop it just below this heading it's time to copy this entire text firstly let's close this inspect window and then we can copy it from here let's go back to the elementor and here we can change this entire text now it's time to change the alignment of this text as well so let's make it align left okay then go on to the style and here under the text color let's make it white so it is better visible now let's go back to the reference website here you have to understand that this entire inner section has four columns this is the first column second column third column and four column so here we have to add two more columns this is the first column then second then third and four so let's add a few more columns over here now in the second column we have to add an icon as you can see over here this is an icon so let's add an icon in the search widget box we have to search for icon that is icon let's drop it over here now its settings has already been opened on the left hand side go on to the icon library and here we can search for mobile that is mobile let's choose this one insert and it will appear over here now here we have the option view right now it is default you can set it to stacked so this is the stacked or you can choose the frame so i'm just going to use the stacked one because on the reference website they have used the stacked layout now let's go back and we have to change the color so go on to the style and right now we can see the primary color is blue let's make it red okay after that we have to put this heading online delivery let's copy it from here duplicate this bringing happiness heading and then drop it in the second column just below this icon at last we can change this heading to the one that we have already copied like this online delivery now we can reduce the font size so let's reduce the font size from this option okay and we can make the alignment to center right now it is left let's go on to the content and we can make it center align cool now let's click on update it's time to refresh our front page okay let's scroll down here we go so now we can see this section has been created i can see over here the s from this happiness word has been shifted to the bottom because of the limited width of this entire column so let's go back and here we can reduce the font size so let's make it 52 okay one more thing I'm missing, I think so. Yeah, this is the order online link. So let's go back and we can put this link as well. This is basically a kind of button. So firstly, we can click on it. Then here is the button. Just drop it below this heading. Now here we can type order online. Then after we can set the alignment to center. Now let's go on to the style tab. Okay, here firstly, we need to make the text color to white. Let's make it white. And then background color should be transparent. So let's make it transparent. Now let's go back onto the content tab and here we have to add an icon just after this text. So you can see this is the icon option inside this content tab. Go on to this icon library option and here we can search for a double r o w that is arrow. So this is the arrow. Let's insert it. Okay. Now here you can change the position of this arrow. Right now it appears just before the text. So here the before option is selected by default. Let's make it after like this. Now we can jump on the style tab and here we can change the font styling. So go on to the typography and here we can make it open sans. Okay. We can transform it to uppercase. 
and we can increase the weight to 600. Let's increase the size as well. I think that looks better. Now we can see over here between the online delivery heading and this order online there is a huge gap. So what we actually can do we can set the top margin of this online text in negative value. So let's go on to the advanced uncheck this icon and here we can decrease the top margin that looks much better. Now let's click on update. Okay it's time to refresh our front page once again. Here we go. Now it's time to duplicate this entire column again. So what we can do we can simply duplicate this entire column again we can duplicate this column and then delete the remaining last two columns. Here we go. Now it's time to change this icon. So let's see what icon is it. I don't know what icon is it but let's try to find out. Okay so I think it is mouse. Let's click on insert. Okay that icon has been changed and the text is click and collect. So let's change the text from here. Click and collect. The last one is restaurant dining. Okay. And that is the pizza. So let's select P I Z. That is pizza. Okay. Restaurant and dining. Let's reduce the font size as well. So it can fit in the single line 24. Let's make this one as well 24. Okay and this one too. Okay after that we can update. Now let's refresh our front page again. Here we go. So we have just created this kind of section the one that we have over here. Now it's time to control the height. So let's go back to the Elementor. We have to go on to this section height. Under the layout tab this is the height option right now it is default. Let's make it minimum height. And then we can increase the height of this particular section. So I'm just going to make it 500. Okay, let's update. And again, we can refresh our home page. Here we go. So this section also looks much better. Now let's go on to the reference website. It's time to create a section something like this. Okay, so let's go back to the Elementor and here we can take a new section. Now in this section we have to take a heading with the text choose your flavor. So let's go back here we can take an inner section as well and let's delete the second column. Now inside the first column we can drop this heading widget. In this heading widget we have to type choose your flavor. Align it to center go back to the style and here we have to make the font color to red. Let's make it red. Okay. Now we can jump on the typography here we have to set the font family to Oswald okay and we have to control the font size as well. So I think this size is better and now we can transform it to uppercase. After that we have to put this kind of big text food that brings people together. Let's copy it from here go back we can simply duplicate this entire heading okay this is the second heading. Now here we can change the text after that we have to jump on the style tab. Here we can make the font color to a little bit dark gray. Now it's time to increase the font size. So we can increase the font size something like this that looks much better and similar to the one that we have over here. After that we have some kind of text. Let's copy it from here. Then again we can duplicate this text. Let's duplicate it and then we can drop it just below this big heading. Okay it's time to change this text first and then after we can align it to center as well as jump on the style tab and we can make the color to dark gray. That looks much better. Now let's go back to the reference website. Here we have a button view all menu. So let's go ahead and we can drop a button just below this text. Okay. Now let's align it to center and we can change the text from here. View all menu. Okay. Now let's jump on the style tab and here we have to make the button color to transparent. Let's make it transparent. Okay, now text color should be red. Let's make it red. Also, we have to set the border type to solid and border color should be red. Okay, so it is much similar to the one that we have over here. Now on the hover state, the background should be red and text should be white. So let's go back on the hover state. The text should be white. Background color should be red and border color should be red. Now let's start testing this button. 
here we go if you would like to change the text style or font family you can change it later on now let's go ahead and we can create these kind of sections so again we have to take an inner section this is the inner section we can simply duplicate it like this then we can delete the internal content now let's divide this inner section into three columns so let's add two more columns now it's time to take an image widget this is the image widget let's drop it over here then we can go on to the choose image i think the first image is pasta so let's select this pasta as i had already uploaded it into the media library insert media okay let's make the size to full alignment should be center then jump on the style tab and here we can see on the hover state we have to set the hover animation so let's make it something like pulse when you put mouse on it it will animate like this so you can change the hover animation as per your requirement like this float i think this is the one that they are also using on their website then after we can put the text just below it so let's duplicate this one okay now we can drop it just below this image okay and the text is pasta so let's change this text we can also increase the font size from here now it's time to duplicate this entire column just to duplicate it and again we can duplicate and then we can delete the empty columns okay it's time to change this image so what is the second image that is the pizza image okay this one here we can change the text to pizza and third one is dessert now let's reduce the top margin of this first column so go on to this column icon then advanced uncheck this icon and we can set it to 72 and then put minus just before it in the same way we have to put the negative margin at the top of this column okay and we can set the top margin of this middle column as well but we have to increase the top margin of this column 30 is better then we can update and it's time to refresh our home page here we go so far we have created an amazing home page over here and it is much similar to the one that we have on the reference website as you can see over here it looks much better it's really very very easy on the elementor that you can create the content you can animate the content and you can style the headings text buttons etc now let's go back onto the reference website and we can find out some more useful options now let's create a section something similar to this let's go back onto the elementor we can take a new section okay inside this section we can take an inner section in the first section we have to put a heading so i'm just going to duplicate this one we can drop it inside the first column and here we can change the text to best deals alignment should be left as it is left on the reference website then we can change the font color to dark black also we have to increase the font size over here okay and we have to set the exclamation sign as well then after we have to take another inner section just to duplicate this section okay we have to delete this heading now in the first column we have to put an image just put the image widget then we can choose a new image from our desktop so i think this is the image they have used on their website let's click on insert media it will appear over here after that we have to set the size to full alignment should be left and now here you can see this is the column setting just put your mouse on it then go on to the advanced now here we have to set the padding to zero now what is padding padding means the extra space inside an element so right now we have set the padding of this column that means the extra internal white space has been removed if we increase this value you can see there is an extra white space added inside this column so padding means the extra white space inside a column and margin means extra white space outside an element or a column now let's go back onto the reference website the second column color is red now what we have to do we have to set the background color of this entire inner section so just go on to the settings of this inner section and here on the style tab we have to set a background color to red so let's set the background color to red like this okay after that we can jump back onto the reference website now the text is written big meat monster let's copy it from here okay we can go back now it's time to duplicate this entire heading again all right now here we can paste the same text and then we have to change the text color to white 
that's really very very simple then again we have to put some more text like this one let's copy it from here go back just duplicate it or we can simply remove it and we can take text editor i think we have this text one over here just duplicate it okay we can drop it over here and now we can put it inside this column okay after that we can change the text and then we have to align it to left and then we have to jump on this style tab and then change the color to white after that we can duplicate this heading once again okay now change the text of this heading to 18 bucks or 18 dollars now if you can see over here the content i mean in the second column the content is aligned vertically middle i mean there's extra space at the top and the bottom the content is not sticking at the top but here in our case the content is sticked at the top and extra white space added only at the bottom so in order to align the entire content in the vertically middle area you just need to go on to the column setting and then go on to the layout here we have the vertical align option just to make it middle so it will automatically align it to middle also we can add some kind of extra padding on the left hand side so this content will not too close to the border of this column so go on to the advanced first of all uncheck this icon now this is the left padding just increase the value so extra space will be added in the same way add the padding to the right okay after that we can update it and it's time to refresh our home page now let's scroll down here we go so this is a little bit similar to the one that we have on the reference website now in order to add the curves at each corner of this entire inner section we just need to add some kind of border radius to this inner section just go on to the settings of this inner section under this style here we can see border area now you can increase the border radius then after click on update so we have added just 11 pixels of border radius it's time to refresh our home page again here we go so now you can see curves have been added but they are not added on the left hand side so let's fix this issue as well what we have to do just click on this image then go on to the style and here we have to set the border radius on this image as well just uncheck this icon we have to increase the top to 11 and then left to 11 that's it then update so here you can see the curves have been added so in this way you can create more content on this page it's really very very simple with the help of this elementor page builder let's try to create a section something like this this is really a very interesting section let's go back we can take a section over here okay after that in this section we have to set a background image this is basically a full background image so let's go back to the style and here we have to upload a background image that looks like a gallery image so i think this is the one let's click on open it's time to click on insert media again we have to set the position to center center repeat should be no repeat and size should be cover okay after that inside this section we have to take inner section just drop this inner section over here okay and we can divide it into three columns so let's add one more column as well so total three columns are over here now the good thing about elementor is that you can also resize the columns with just put your mouse on the border and just drag it on the right hand side like this so right column i mean the third column will be reduced and middle column width has been increased in the same way we can reduce the width of this middle column as well okay let's make it 37 percent now we have to set this kind of thing so first of all we have to set the background color of this particular column let's go back this is the column just go on to the column setting and here under the style we have to set the color to red okay then we can set the padding to zero let's set it to zero as well as margin should be zero also one more thing i would like to suggest to you that go on to the column setting of this outer section and set the padding to zero because there is always a default padding added now here we have this kind of thing instagram icon then a heading over here so first of all let's copy this entire heading go back now here we have to add a new widget that is what we call icon box this is the icon box just drop it inside it okay now first of all we have to change the icon so here we can search for insta that is instagram insert okay instagram icon is over here here we can change the heading after that what text has been written i'm just leaving the text as it is we have to put a button as well visit instagram okay let's delete some extra text from here jump on this style tab here we can change the icon color to white okay then jump on the content tab 
here we can set the alignment to left vertical alignment should be middle then title color should also be white as well as description color should also be white okay after that jump on this column and we have to increase the padding so let's increase the padding a little bit more okay like this also one more thing we have to do just go on to this icon box setting and under the content scroll down here you can see icon position right now it is top just set it to left so it goes over here then jump on the style and here we have the option spacing you can control the space between the icon and the heading then go on to the content tab and here again we can see spacing so when you increase this spacing it increases the space between the heading and the text written just below it okay now let's put a button just below it click on this grid icon here's the button just drop it over here and we can type visit instagram and you can put the instagram link over here let's set the instagram icon as well okay let's click on insert all right and we can align it to center then after jump on the style tab and we can change the text color to white then background color should be transparent border type should be solid border width should be two pixels and border color should be white okay after that on the hover state we can change the background color to black also border color should be black that's it let's hover on it you can see the effect okay now let's add one more inner section just duplicate it like this and delete this middle column okay delete the extra column as well and here we can put some spacer so here we can search for s p a c e r that is a spacer it will add extra transparent space okay so it will increase the height like this after that we can click on update and it's time to refresh our home page so all the settings are given in the elementary you just need to learn these things like this we have also created a similar section the one that we have over here you can match the styling it will take a lot of time but you have to do practice on it okay now let's explore a few more sections let's try to create this section this looks good so what we can do we can simply add a new section inside this section we have to put inner section on the left side we have to put this kind of content and on the right hand side we have to put this image so what actually we have to do first of all let's delete it now we have to divide this outer section into two columns so let's add one more column okay and we can reduce the width of the next column now in the second column we have to put an image that is basically the mobile phone image so let's go back to the upload files and from here we can upload this image okay insert media so it appears like this after that in the left column we can put inner section now let's delete the second column of this inner section and here we have to put a heading that is free delivery so let's put the heading over here do we have any heading of course we have this one let's duplicate it and we can drop it in the first column in the title box we can write free delivery okay we can change the text color as well so it will be visible like this and we can reduce the font size as well after that there is a next heading download the app now okay let's duplicate this heading and we can change this heading to download the app now okay let's increase the font size and then after i think we have some text let's copy it from here okay do we have any text over here yeah this one just duplicate it first of all put it over here and then after we can drop it in this desired section okay let's change the text and we can change the alignment to left text color should be gray okay and if you can see over here the line has been broken after gravida so here what you need to do after gravida you have to change the line what you need to do just go on to this text mode the text editor has two modes visual mode and text mode you have to go on to this text mode and after the gravida just add the same html tag that is br so it will break the line like this right after that we have to put two buttons over here so we do have a button over here first of all let's take an inner section so let's duplicate this section again and then delete the extra content from here just make this section empty okay now it's time to put this button just drop it in this inner section okay 
and then we can add a new column as well or we can simply duplicate this entire column. Now we have to change the background color and the styling of this button so it will be visible. Let's go back onto the settings of this particular button. Jump on this style. Here we can see the text and the border is red. So on the normal state the text color should be red. Background is transparent that's okay. Border color should also be red. After that we have to change the text. So here we can type something like Google Play. Okay and you can put the link over here. Also we can change the icon. So let's type over here Play Store. So this is the Google Play Store icon. Insert it. Let's delete the second button. And we can duplicate this entire column. Let's delete the third one. And here we can change the text. iOS Store. We can also change the icon to Apple. Okay. After that we have to change the alignment of this button. So let's go back to the first button, align it to right and then go on to the second button and align it to left. You can do one more thing. As we can see on to the reference website, both the buttons are aligned on the left hand side. There is no extra white space. So what we can do actually, we can align the first button to left and then we can reduce the width of this first column. So it will look much better. After that go on to the first column edit column okay vertical align should be middle so all the content will be aligned to middle after that we can simply update and then we can refresh our home page okay here we go so we have created this section as well so that's really very very simple to create content onto the wordpress with the help of elementor page builder this page really looks good and it is suitable for your fast food or pizza delivery business now let's go ahead and we can start creating some products on your website now let's say you are planning to sell pizza burgers and some desserts so we need to go back onto our wordpress dashboard let's go ahead and we can close this elementor screen because home page is ready okay so firstly we need to create product categories. Just hover on the products and then click on categories. Now from this page we can create the product categories. In this name field we have to enter pizza. Just leave the slug box empty, parent category empty and leave all these fields empty. Just click on add new category and the pizza product category is created. In the same way we can create burgers then click on add new category then dessert okay so all three product categories have been created to change the order of these categories you can see this hamburger icon just drag it and put it at the top so pizza will be the first category then burgers will be the second category and last category will be dessert uncategorized is the default category that cannot be either deleted or edited now let's start creating a pizza product to create a product under the products tab here you can see add new just click on it so this is the product creation page from where we can create products on our website. This is the product name field. So here you have to give your pizza name. Let's say chicken pizza. After that in this box you can put the long description of your product. Here we have two modes. Either you can choose the visual mode to write your content or you can use the text mode. So here I'm just going to use the visual mode and I have already copied some dummy text that I'm going to paste it over here. Okay. You can put as much as text in this box. You can also insert an image in this area by just using this add media button. So this is the media library. Let's say we are going to use this image. Before clicking on insert into product, you have to choose the size of this image. So here you can choose the size. Let's say large and then insert into product. So it will appear over here like this. Then after we can scroll down and this is the product data section from where we can set the price of this product. So right now it is simple product. Here in the regular price, you can put the price of your product. Let's say we are going to sell this pizza for 500 Indian rupees. You can change the currency later on. I will guide you from where we can set the currency to US dollars or your own local currency. Right now I have set up the Indian rupees. So I'm just putting the price 500. Now in case if this pizza is going to be at a discounted price, then I can put the sale price in this box that will be less than this regular price. So let's say I'm going to put the price over here 467 Indian rupees. After that, this is the inventory tab from where you can set the SKU ID of this product. SKU IDs are always unique. So these could be any alphanumeric number just like PIZ00768 like this. 
if you would like to manage the stock you can simply enable this stock management level and here you can put the number of stocks available in your inventory so let's say we have total 30 quantity of this particular chicken pizza i'm just entering the value over here then after these options are really not that much of useful after that we have this product short description so here you can put the short description about your product for example this or you can also put some kind of list content we can use this bullet list from here and then we can put the text like fresh oven baked mozzarella cheese i think the spelling is wrong yeah and here we can put one more item just like heavy toppings okay so you can also put the short description of the product in this box then after let's jump on the right hand side from this point we can set the product image this will be the main product image of your pizza so here we can click on set product image and then we can upload the product image from this option so i have already prepared some images this is the product one let's open it and then we can click on set product image so it will appear over here Along with that, you can also add some more images of this particular product. So I'm just going to use a few other images for this product. Let's go ahead and we can upload. Now it's time to click on add to gallery. So all these images will appear over here. Now let's scroll up. Leave this extra settings option as it is. Here you can put the product tags just like pizza. This is not mandatory, but I think it is good for SEO. Fast food, some relevant terms to this product. After that, this is the categories section where you have to select the particular category of this product. So here we have to select pizza because this particular chicken pizza will be going under this pizza category. At last, once you are confirmed that everything have been done, then just click on publish button and this product is live on your website. Okay, here we can see view product. Just right click on it and then open link in new tab. So let's check out how exactly it's look like on the front end. So it looks something like this. It has the product title over here. This is the price. I mean the sale price and this is the regular price. This is the short description. That is the total number of availability of this product in the inventory. And this is the SKU ID, product category and the tags. Along with that, we have this big product image along with the gallery images. So you can see how we can create a product and we can set the gallery images. Now, it might be possible that a user would like to order a regular pizza or a medium size or a large pizza, but we cannot see any such option here. Those products that has several options like different sizes, colors, weights, etc. are called variable products. The one that we have created over here is just a simple product. So let's go ahead and we can convert this basic simple product into a variable product. Let's go back on the WordPress dashboard now. To create a variable product, first of all, under the products, we need to click on attributes. Now here, we have to create the attributes. Now what are attributes? Attributes means just like size. Size is an attribute that will be having the values regular, medium and large. So let's click on add attribute. Okay, so this attribute has been created. Now let's click on configure terms. So we can add the values inside this size attribute. So here we have to provide the sizes just like regular, then medium, and then large. Again, we can change the order from here. Just drag this hamburger icon and put it at the top. So regular will be the first one and then we can put the medium and the last one is large. In the same way, you can go back to the attributes again and you can create few more attributes just like order type. This is another attribute that we are going to create. Now inside this order type attribute, we can configure terms whether a user would like to dine in or take away. You can add few more values over here as per your need. Cool. Let's go back to all products. Okay, so this is the chicken pizza. Let's click on edit. Okay, scroll down. Now here under the product data section, you can see simple product is selected. So from this drop down, we have to select variable product. So this simple product will be converted into a variable product. And you can see the price field has been gone because there will be no one single price for this product. But according to the variables like regular size will be having a different price, medium size will be having a different one and larger will be having a huge price. 
so our next step is we need to jump on this attribute section under this product data tab let's click on attributes now from this drop down you need to select the attribute type so firstly i'm selecting size then click on add okay so this is the size attribute now here in the value section just click on select all so whatever the number of values we have assigned to this size attribute inside this section they all will appear over here do not forget to choose this option use for variations okay after that again we have to choose the second attribute that is order type then click on add it appears over here again click select all and then used for variations that's it now click on save attributes so we have just selected two attributes over here it's time to create the variations so let's click on variations okay here we need to click create variations from all attributes just click on go just confirm click on ok now woocommerce have created six variations as per our attributes let's click on ok so six variations are regular and then dine in regular then take away medium dine in medium take away large dine in and large take away let's expand this first option so i am willing to set the price for regular pizza that could be 200 now let's assume that we are setting a specific price for dine in and take away if someone wants to dine in then the price will be 10 rupees extra if someone wants to take away then there will be 5 rupees for the packing charges so here regular pizza price is 200 and along with the dine in the price will be 210 indian rupees if someone order regular pizza and take away that could be 200 plus 5 rupees that is 205 rupees in the same way if we are assuming the price for medium pizza that could be around like 350 then along with the dine in it could be 360 rupees now medium size pizza 350 take away that could be 355 and large pizza we are considering it at 500 indian rupees along with the dine in option this could be 510 rupees and large pizza take away that could be 505 indian rupees after that we have to click on save changes okay once it's done then now you need to click on this update button just click on it okay now it's time to refresh our front page here we go so now you can see size and order type option is available and it is showing the price range that starts from 205 rupees to 510 rupees now user must need to select the size and order type before clicking on the add to cart button let's try to click on add to cart we are getting this kind of error message please select some product options before adding this product to your cart so a user must need to select a size and order type so let's say we are going to select medium after that order type would be either dine in or take away let's say we are just choosing dine in so medium pizza price is 360 rupees we already set this price in the back end and availability is 30 in stock in the same way if someone chooses large size the price changes over here if someone chooses from here take away it will be 505 indian rupees and then after anyone can add to cart and place this order so this is how we can add extra options with your pizza product this is not over yet now we have to add a few more options for the user like what kind of toppings they need what kind of crust they need and there are so many options domino site offers to their users so let's go ahead and we can integrate that kind of feature now those kind of feature can be done with the help of a new plugin that is what we call extra product options so that is also a premium plugin you can simply go on to wpscratch.com again okay and here we need to search for okay so this is the one woocommerce extra product options let's click on it okay so here we can see the price is 29 dollars but i'm giving you a coupon code through which you can get around nine dollars of extra discount on this product page the coupon code is extra 09 it's not oh it's 09 this coupon code will allow you to get nine percent of extra discount just go over here click on add to card and apply the coupon code on the checkout page so let's go back onto the wordpress dashboard and we have to install and activate this plugin simply we can go on to the plugins just click on add new okay here we need to click on upload plugin because the plugin that you will buy from here that will be downloaded in .zip format on your computer so we have to upload that plugin into our wordpress website now let's click on browse okay so this is the plugin let's install and activate this plugin into our wordpress website all right 
So plugin has successfully been activated and we can see a new tab extra product options on the left hand side. Now let's go back onto the product. So click on all products and again we need to edit this product. Now this plugin will allow you to add extra options which are paid or free. Here we can see under the product data there is a new field extra product options. Let's click on it. Now first of all let's go ahead and we can change the styling of these drop downs. So here we can see style variations. Let's click on it. Now it will appear like this. Just click on this pencil icon to edit this field. So you can change the label type heading to H3, H4 or H2. That's completely up to you. I'm just leaving it as it is. This is the label color. So let's leave all these settings as it is. We just need to move on the main point. Just go on to this general options. Here it will auto fetch the variables size and order type. Here also we have size and order type attribute. Now let's expand this size attribute. Okay. How exactly you would like to display this size attribute? Either boxes, radio buttons, radio buttons and image at the start of the label. There are so many options available. So let's go ahead and we can select the radio buttons. Then after we have a new option show reset button. So let's make it enable. After that we don't have to do anything over here. Just leave it as it is and we can simply close this tab. It's time to select the order type attribute. Here also we can select the radio buttons. That's it. After that we can click on update and it's time to update this main product. Now let's refresh our front page. Here we go. So now you can see those borings drop down has completely been removed and now we can see the radio buttons instead of that drop down. Now let's open the Domino's website and we can check what kind of extra options they are offering to their users. So this is the first one. Okay, let's click on customize. Here we go. So they are offering size option which we have already implemented onto our product. Then they have the crust option, extra cheese option and toppings. So let's go ahead and we can create the crust option. We can go back onto the product page. Now here we need to click on extra product options. It's time to click on add element in a new section. Now this kind of field will be actually a radio button field. So here we can choose the radio buttons. Okay, this is the radio button. Now it's time to add the options. So click on this pencil icon. Here we have so many tabs. The first one is label options. So here we can change the label to select crust. This will be the label. After that we need to jump on general options. Here this is the status of this field. Right now it is enable. Of course it needs to be enabled then only it will be visible on the front page. If you would like to make it a mandatory field then you need to enable this option as well. Here we have another option set to fee. That means whenever someone choose an option from the radio button field there will be a different kind of fee applicable. So of course as we can see over here rupees 639 applicable on new hand tossed crust. Whereas 689 rupees applies on this crust and so on. So we have to set the fee for each of the crust type. Now here we have text before price. So if you would like to enter some kind of special symbol or any text over here just before the price then you can put it in this box otherwise you can leave it empty. In the same way text after price I'm just leaving it as it is. Quantity selector is really not needed. Then we have this replacement mode. So this option actually allows you to either display images, color swatches or text swatches in place of the default radio button. So let's select this text swatches. Then we can scroll down. We do not need to change the product images in selecting the option because this is just an add-on option. Then we have items per row. Let's put it over here too. Then enable clear option button. Let's enable it. Popular option just leave it as it is. Now in this field we can provide the options. So first one will be this one. New hand tossed. Let's type here new hand tossed. And what could be the price? Here it is 639 Indian rupees. I'm just putting it over here like 59 rupees. And we can enable this checkbox so it will be by default selected. After that if you would like to add one more option. Here we can see add item just click on it. A new field is added. Now here we can enter the second crust 100% wheat thin crust. So here we can enter 100% wheat thin crust and we can put the price to 99 Indian rupees and so on. In this way you can add more and more options over here. After that we do not need to play with any other options. These are really not needed. Just click on update. 
after that we can update this entire product so whenever you make any changes on your website or any kind of option you have added to a product after that update the page and immediately refresh your front page so here we go we can see this kind of option is available right now it is not appearing properly because we have a sidebar so let's disable this sidebar as well in the astra theme there is basically a sidebar so sidebar is customizer setting just make it no sidebar and here we can select full width contained okay let's update it and again we can refresh our front page here we go so now it looks something like this you can see new hand toss is 59 rupees and 100 thin crust is 99 rupees price is not updated over here firstly we have to select the size of the pizza so i'm just going to order medium then order type will be takeaway okay so total price goes 355 indian rupees and then after i have to select the crust because this is the mandatory field so this one is already selected let's select this one okay so now here you can see fees amount 99 indian rupees total is 454 if you just uncheck it then the total price is 355 rupees so here we need to select a crust as well like this in the same way we can add few more options so let's see over here extra cheese option let's go ahead and we can add this option too okay add element so this will be a checkbox field now let's edit it here we need to go on to the label options and here we can put the label extra cheese then after jump on the general options make it enable i'm not making this field mandatory now let's scroll down and we just need to add the option okay so here yes i want extra cheese and here we can put the price like 60 bucks update and then we can update this page as well okay let's refresh it here we go so now you can see there is extra option extra cheese when someone check this box then price will be added more so this is the options amount 60 rupees added over here fees amount 99 for the crust and total is 514 indian rupees let's go ahead and we can add few more options this is the toppings so now we are going to add the toppings as an image so people will be seeing the image so let's go back to the product page all right again we need to click on extra product options and here add element in new section now here again we need to choose this check boxes because it might be possible that one person can choose more than one type of toppings on their pizza so check boxes allows a user to choose multiple options now let's click on this pencil icon okay on the label tab we can change the label to veg toppings then jump on the general options okay let's scroll down here replacement mode will be image swatches then we can scroll down okay items per row we can select three now here we have the options field so firstly let's check the first topping that is grilled mushrooms so let's type over here grilled mushrooms and here we can upload the image let's click on it i have already downloaded the toppings images so let's upload it onto our website so this is the mushrooms let's click on open okay select and it will appear over here we can set the price over here just like 40 bucks in the same way we can add one more toppings so what is the next one i think it is crisp capsicum let's type over here crisp capsicum and we can set an image as well and we can set the price of this topping is around 70 bucks one more topping we can add over here it is red pepper and here we can put the price 55 bucks that's it after that we can click on update let's update this page and we can check how exactly it looks like on the front page now let's refresh our front page here we go so it looks really good now let's click on this crisp capsicum and here you can see options amount has been increased now if i select red pepper you can see two toppings i have selected because this is the checkbox option that allows a user to choose either one option or multiple options we can also choose grilled mushroom as well so total options price is 225 so this is basically the extra add-on price that is going to be calculated over here now the total price is 679 
In the same way, we can also add some kind of non-veg toppings. So let's go ahead and here we can duplicate this entire section just to duplicate it. Okay, now let's click on this edit icon label. So this will be non-veg toppings. Let's jump over here and we can change the images and the options. So on the domino side, the first non-veg topping is pepper barbecue chicken. Okay, so here we can put and we can change this image as well. So let's go back and we can upload an image from here. All right, and we can set this price 65 rupees. After that, the next option is I think peri peri chicken. Okay, so that is peri peri chicken. Then we can change the image, select, and here we can update the price to 98 rupees. Then update, and now we can update the product. It's time to refresh our front page. Here we go. So now we have the option of non veg toppings as well. Let's select one non veg topping, peri peri chicken. So here you can see the price updated. Oh, sorry, I did a mistake. Actually, we had duplicated this entire section. So this red pepper was also duplicated, but I forgot to remove it from the non veg toppings. So let's remove it from here. Okay. This is the last checkbox. Let's remove this extra option from here. This is the red pepper, just delete it from here. So this is the cross icon, click on it and then update. Again, update this entire page and again, refresh your front page. That's all you have to do. So this is how you can add extra add on options onto your fast food product or any kind of product on your food delivery website. In the same way, I'm just going to duplicate this entire product and I will just only changing the product name and the product images. So duplicating a product is really very, very easy. Just go on to this all products tab and here we can see this is our native option duplicate. Once you click on it, this entire product with all the options, all the prices and everything will be duplicated. Like you can see over here, we just need to change the title. So let's say I'm just going to put the title over here, plain cheese pizza. That's it. And the same I will change over here. This is basically the slug or I can say the exact URL. Just put it over here. And then after we can change the product image. So let's change this image to this one. Okay. I'm not changing the gallery images, but you can change it as per your requirement. And here we can update the price as well. So you can go ahead one by one to all these variations and set your own price. I'm just putting over here like 345 and so on. Then after we can click on save changes and publish. Now let's refresh our front page. Here we go. So this is the same pizza. Now by default, WooCommerce create the shop page. So this is the shop page menu. Let's click on it and it will display all the products which are published onto our website. So just now I have just published this one. It is also showing over here. The more products you will add, all those products will automatically be displaying on this shop page. Now it's time to create the header because right now we are just seeing over here a simple text in place of the logo and there is no search box. There is no good kind of menu items. So let's go ahead and we can make an amazing header over here. I have one reference website and we can make a header something similar to this. This website's header look good to me. So let me open it. Here we go. So this header looks good to me. Like here we can see at the very top, we have this top bar that has a coupon code, then my account link and then few more links. Then we have this call on order number, then the logo, then the shopping cart menu and then they have the main menu of the website. So let's go ahead and we can try to make a similar header onto our website. Let's go back to the WordPress dashboard. Now here, Elementor Pro allows you to create custom header as per your requirements. So here we can see under the Elementor, there is a new menu that is templates. Just hover on it and then you have to click on theme builder. So the feature of making a custom header and custom footer is only available in the Elementor Pro plugin. Now here we can see there are so many parts of your website of which you can create the custom content. Like you can create a custom header, you can create a custom footer, you can design the single post page, you can design a single page and there are so many other pages as well. Let's go ahead and we can create on this plus icon under this header tab. Let's click on it. Okay, just close this pop up because these all are the pro headers and we need a license key to insert these headers, but we would like to learn all the things from scratch. So let's close this pop up and here we need to click on this plus. Then take just one column section 
and firstly we need to go on to the section settings then jump on the style and here we need to set the background color to red so let's make it red i think the similar we have on this reference website as well after that we have to put this kind of content so let's copy this content from here we can go back okay now inside this section we need to click on this plus and then after we have to drop this inner section okay now in the first column we need to click on plus and then here in the search widget box we need to search for icon list this is the icon list just put it over here okay now on the left hand side the settings of this particular widget are opened delete the other two tabs just expand the first one and here we have to put the text okay after that we can also change the icon form here so let's say we can put something like gift this icon looks good okay after that we need to jump on the style tab and we have to change the color of this particular text and the icon so on the icon tab we can make it white like this we can also increase the icon size if you want then after we can jump on the text tab and here we can make the text color to white as well if you would like to change the typography just go on to this pencil icon you can increase the weight from here or you can change the font size that's completely up to you so let's increase the font size from here a little bit i think 14 pixel is fine now in the next column i'm just going to put some kind of social media icons so let's click on this plus then here we need to search for s o c i a l that is social these are the social icons widget just drop it in the next column okay so by default facebook twitter and youtube icons are listed over here on the left hand side the settings are also opened if you would like to set the link of your particular social media page just click on this facebook it will be expanded like this and in this link box you can put your social media page link i'm just going to put one of my uh, facebook page link that is facebook.com then websoft global okay in the same way you can put the link for twitter account and the youtube account if you would like to add a few more icons just click on this add item button a new tab will be added now here we can simply click on icon library and here we can search for just like instagram so here we can add the instagram icon like this so it is really very very awesome and then after here you can put your instagram link so my instagram username is only saddam you can also follow me on instagram as well after that we can simply close this tab so you can add as many as social media icons in this column now here we can align them to right okay then after we can jump on the style tab and here right now it is the official color let's make it custom color now in the primary color you can change the color as for your requirements so i'm just going to make it transparent let's make it transparent the background is transparent so the main icon color are now white from here we can control the size of the icons so let's say we can put the icon size to 17 pixels okay we can also control the padding padding means the extra space as i already told you so here we can increase or decrease the padding inside the column and the content here we can also control the spacing in between the icons like this if you increase the spacing the space between the icons will be increased or decreased so there are so many options available in the elementor for you after that once this section is completely been done then here you need to just pay attention to this outer section column so this is the outer section and here you can see two column icons this is the inner section column icon and this is the outer sections column icon you need to go on to this outer section column icon right click and then click on edit column now jump on the advanced and here we have to set the padding to zero so extra space inside this entire section will be removed like this so you can see the height of this particular section has also been decreased now it's time to add a new section so just click on this plus take this one column section again like this and here on the reference website we have the white background that means we don't need to change any kind of background color but i always suggest you to set a background color go on to this edit section style and here we can set the background color to white okay then after we need to take inner section inside this section as well so here is the inner section just to drop it after that we have to add one more column now in the first column we have to put a contact number something like this call on number and then there's a number so let's go ahead and we can create something like this here we need to take the icon box i c o n and this is the icon box widget just drop it in the first column now firstly we need to change the icon so just go on to this icon library and here we can search for phone 
so this is the icon let's insert it okay after that view is default let's make it stacked like this and then after here we can put something like call for order or whatever the text you would like to put over here just write it in this box now in the description box we can put the phone number so i'm just going to put over here 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 like this okay then we can jump on the style but before going on to the style let's set it over here icon position to left okay then we can go on to the style here we can set the primary color to something like yellow because i think the mustard color is also on the reference website so i think this color looks better or i think we need to make it a little bit yellowish type okay cool now we need to reduce the icon size so from here we can control the icon size let's change the font color and font styling so we can simply click on the content tab and here we can see title color is blue let's make it dark black okay after that we need to go on to this typography option and here we have to change the font family so let's try to use some other font like this rescue i think that font looks better and then here we can control the font size after that we need to go on to this description that is basically the phone number so let's make it black as well okay and then we can jump on the typography again we can make the font size to rescue and then we can increase the font weight from here 500 or 600 whatever you want and then we can increase the font size now let's scroll up now here you can see spacing just control the spacing in between the heading and the description also we can set the vertical alignment to middle like this so it looks much better now let's reduce the first column width so i'm just going to make it a little bit smaller like 22 percent okay now in the middle of the column we have to put the logo so let's go over here and this is the site logo but i'm not going to use this site logo instead of this i'm just going to use this image widget let's drop it over here and then we have to choose the image so we can simply go on to the upload files i already have downloaded the uh, you know logo so let's find it out so this is the logo let's open it okay after that we can simply click on insert media and here we can set it to full alignment should be either center or left i would suggest you to set it to left because in the upcoming few minutes i will also be guiding you how we can put some kind of product search box over here so we need to add one more column okay like this so let's reduce the width of this logo column as well and we can set it to vertical align middle also we need to set this one as well okay now in the last column we have to put the menu cart this is the menu cart widget just drop it in the last column and also reduce the width of this last column okay we can make it to vertical align middle as well okay and we have so many options on this menu cart too like this icon cart medium you can set it to cart solid so that is completely up to you what kind of icon you would like to use then item indicator bubble plane or whatever you want you can set from here you can control the alignment i'm just making it right so it will be aligned right inside its own column then after we can jump on this cart tab and here we can see so many other options are also available like cart type side cart or you can set it to mini cart i will show you on the front page the effect what exactly happens when we hover on this entire menu cart widget then after we have this open cart on click or on hover so on hover is the good option on hover means like we have on the dummy website when we put mouse on it so this is called hover and you can see no products in the cart so we do not need to click on it to check how many products in the cart but we just need to mouse hover on this particular icon and it will display all the products so this is really a cool feature after that other options are also available but we do not need to deal with them now it's time to put the menu just below it here we can see these are some of the menus but we haven't created any menu into our website right now all the default pages are showing in place of the custom menu so first of all what i suggest to you right now we have just created this header we need to click on this publish button just click on this publish now make sure there are so many people who make the mistake but you don't have to do the same mistake on this page don't simply click on save and close but firstly click on add condition and here you have to select include entire site so this is basically the setting that you must have to do right now it is asking you where do you want to display your template template means the header so here we have to indicate 
that this header must be displayed on the entire site. After adding the condition, just click on save and close. That's it. Now keep this page open. Here we can simply refresh our front page. So here we can see the header design has completely been changed, but still it is not ready. Now let's go back onto your WordPress dashboard. So here you can simply hover on your, uh, you know, website title and this is the dashboard. Just right click open link in new tab. So it will open the WordPress dashboard into the new tab. Okay. Now here to create the menus, we just need to hover on this appearance menu and then click on menus. Now on this page, we can create menu for our header. First of all, in this menu name box here, you have to put a menu group name. Let's say main menu. This is just for your reference. After that, you just need to click on create menu button at the bottom right corner. So we have just created this main menu group. Now on the left hand side, we can see the pages section is enabled post section, custom links, categories and WooCommerce endpoints. Now, if you would like to add a specific page into the menu, you can simply go on to this view all option under this pages tab. And here you will be seeing the list of all the pages which are existing into your WordPress website. So let's say we are going to add the shop page. Just check this box and then click on add to menu. So it will appear on the right hand side like this. So this is the shop page menu. Now let's go ahead and we can display some kind of product categories in the menu. So on this screen options, you have to click on this arrow. Now from here, we have to select product categories and then close this section. Now scroll down and here we can see a new tab product categories. Let's expand it, then go on to the view all. And here you will be seeing all the product categories that you have already created inside this products and then categories section. So let's add burgers, dessert and pizza. At last click on add to menu. Now these all three product categories along with the shop page are added as the menu. Let's click on save menu. Okay. So we have created the menus into a separate tab. Now let's go on to the header part, refresh this page again. Let's click on this plus icon. We can take another section and inside this section, we are going to take inner section again. Let's delete this second column. Now in the middle column, click on this plus and here we have the nav menu. Just drop it inside this inner section like this. Now it's setting will be opened on the left hand side. So here you can see under the content tab under the menu main menu group is selected. This is the only group that we have created. That's the reason it is auto selected and all the menus are showing over here. From here, we can also align them to center. I'm just going to align them to center. Then after we have the pointer option right now, it is underlined. We have so many options available like background. So when you hover on any of the menu, you can see the background color changes in the same way. We have the text pointer. So let's put mouse on any of the existing uh, menu item. You can see the text grow up. So there are so many effects available. Background option is the good one. Now let's jump on the style tab. And here we can change the text color to dark black. Also, let's confirm on the reference website. What is the background color? It is white and fonts are also very much visible. So let's go on to the style tab under the typography. Here we can change the font style. So let's select rescue over here and we can increase the font size from here as well like this. Now these fonts are better visible. After that, click on update. Now let's say we would like to change the orders of these menus. I would like to display pizza as the first menu. Then dessert should be second or burger should be second. Dessert should be third and shop should be fourth. So how we can do that? Go on to this menu page and here you can see this is the pizza one. Just drag it and drop at the very top. So now pizza is at the first position. Then we can drop the burgers. Okay. Like this. And then we can put the dessert at last click on save menu. Now let's refresh our front page. Here we go. So now you can see this is the active page. That's the reason shop page have the background color. And these are the menus that we have created. I think we should make a little bit better menus. So let's go on to the Elementor. And first of all, go on to this outer section setting, right click edit section, then go on to the style and make sure the background color should be pure white. Then we can go on to the border section. And here we can select the border type to solid. After that, uncheck this value together icon. And we have to set the top width to one pixel and bottom width to one pixel. That's it. After that, just hover on it. Go on to the outer sections column. Here it is. 
and then advanced and then set the padding to zero so height will be reduced like this that's really awesome then go on to this column setting as well and here we can set the padding to zero okay that looks fine now let's click on update and we can refresh our front page i think i need to clear the browser cache okay so this is how it looks like this looks really good now it's time to put a product search box in this box that will be a ajax based search box so when someone start typing a letter or two or three letters it will auto display the related products to the user so for putting such kind of product search box we need to install a plugin here we need to hover on plugins and then click on add new now in the search plugin box we need to search for a j a x s e a r c h ajax search that's it now on this page we can see there are so many ajax based search box plugins we can simply install this one ajax search lite by ernest marsinko just install and activate this plugin okay so the plugin has successfully been activated and we can see at the bottom left corner ajax search lite let's click on it okay so this is the interface now here at the very top you can see search short code so this is the short code that we just need to copy from here so let's copy it from here we can go on to the elementor and inside this column just click on the plus and here you have to search for s h o r t that is short code widget just drop it inside it and in this short code widget on the left hand side you have to paste the same one then apply all right so a default search box will be appearing make sure to click on this column setting then vertical align should be middle so it will match with the other elements now let's click on update we can simply close this tab now let's go on to the ajax based search box option firstly we can refresh our front page as well okay so this is the search box now here we have to do a little settings so under the general options let's scroll down now firstly we need to just drag this post and drop it on the left hand side in the same way pages should also be placed over here then scroll down and here we can see products just drop it on the right box what does this means this means that when someone put any kind of query inside the search box it will check the relevant term in the database of products we need to click on save options after that let's click on this layout options okay so this is the preview of the current search box you can change the theme from here right now it is simple red you can make it simple blue or underline white or curvy black let's select this curvy black so this will be the preview we can change the placeholder text from here like search product here and then after we can simply click on save options okay let's refresh our front page i need to clear the browser cache again so this is how the product search box looks like now let's say this is the product plain cheese pizza so firstly i'm just going on to the main domain that is medihouse.online okay so let's type in this search box p i z z a that is pizza here we go so it automatically displays all the products which are related with the term pizza so this is really a very cool product search box which is very helpful in an e-commerce website now let's add the home page menu over here because in the menu area we can't find any home page menu item so let's go back to the wordpress under the appearance we just need to click on menus option and here under the pages just click on view all and this is the home page menu just click on add to menu and then drop it at the very top okay let's click on save menu and we can refresh our home page or we can call it as the front page here we go now you must be wondering when i opened the main domain name that is medihouse.online at this time instead of the content of this home page the front page is just showing this kind of boring hello world post so why is it actually we have created a page with the name home but we haven't specified that this will be the very first page of your website i mean when someone open the domain name then this page should come up we have to do a setting we have to just inform to the wordpress that when someone open the main domain that is medihouse.online then this home page should be displayed so to set this home page as the front page just go back to your wordpress dashboard and under the settings here we can find out the menu reading just click on it okay now here you can see your home page displays your latest post here you have to select a static page and from this home page drop down you have to select the page with the name home after that just click on save changes nothing needs to be done with this post page 
Now let's go ahead and we can refresh our main domain. It's time to clear the browser cache. Here we go. So now you can see this is the main domain and now the home page is displaying with all the content that we have created into our website. So make sure do not forget this setting. Most of the students or the people are facing this kind of issue. So always set a front page into your WordPress website. Now let's go ahead and we can customize the shop page. Right now if I click on shop page you can see this is how it looks like. So let's go ahead and we can make this page amazing. Something similar to the one that we have on the demo website. So go back onto your WordPress dashboard. Now here again we have to create a custom template for the shop page. So just hover on the templates and then you have to click on theme builder. Alright, now this time we have to create the custom shop products page. So here we can see this one products archive. Just click on this plus. Now close this pop up. This is the Elementor page editing screen. Now let's go on to the demo website and here we have this kind of section that has the breadcrumb. This path is basically called the breadcrumb. So let's go back to the Elementor. We can take a section. Okay. And then after we need to change the background color of this section. So let's jump on this style. Then go on to the background type. And from here we can make a light gray color. Like this. After that just click on this plus. And here in the search widget box, we need to search for B-R-E-A-D, that is WooCommerce breadcrumbs. Just drop it inside this section, okay? Its settings have already been opened on the left hand side. Make the alignment to center. Then we can go on to the text color and make it a little bit dark. Then after we can go on to the typography option. And from here, we can increase the font size. So let's make it 16 pixel. And we can change the font family from here. So let's make it R-O-B-O-T-O Roboto. And here we can select Roboto Slab. Now just go on to this column setting. Right click, edit column. And we need to set the vertical align to middle. Okay. After that, let's check the demo website. Now here we have this kind of section that has a banner image. And on the left hand side, we have these kind of filters which are like product categories, then filter by and then an advertising image. So let's go back and we can create this kind of section. Firstly, we need to take an another section. Okay. And this section needs to be divided into two columns. So let's select this second one. Okay. After that, we can reduce the width of first column. So let's make it 25%. In the second column, just click on this plus and here we have to take an inner section. Just drop the inner section inside it. Now delete the second column. And in the first column, we need to take an image. So let's drop this image widget over here. Okay. Now go on to the left hand side, choose image, upload files, and we have to upload the banner image. So I have this image. Let's open it. Click on insert media and it will appear over here. We have to set the image size to full and alignment should be center. After that, we need to go on to this column setting, then go on to the advanced and here we have to set the padding to zero. Now in the left column, we can add another inner section. So this is the inner section. Just drop it over here and then we can delete the second column. Okay. Now here click on this plus. Firstly, we are going to put a heading widget. Just drop it over here and here we can type categories. So these are basically the product categories. Alignment should be left. Go on to this style and here we can change the font color to dark black and then we can set the font styling to Roboto slab. Okay. We can also increase or decrease the font size. So this looks better. Now click on this grid icon and here we need to search for icon list. This is the icon list widget. Just drop it below the categories. Okay. Now here we are going to put the categories link. So let's expand this first list item and here we can change the icon. So let's type over here A N G L E that is angle. So we are going to use this icon. Click on insert like this. Okay. And here we can put the category name that is pizza. Now from where we can get the link of this particular category page. Just go on to the back end of your WordPress website. I'm just going to open the dashboard. Now before copying the product category page link, I would suggest you to just set the permalinks of your WordPress website. So go on to the settings and here we are seeing this permalinks. Just click on it. And here right now you can see the custom structure is this one. Every page has index.php slug. So what does that mean? Let me show you. If you can see over here, we are on the shop page at the very top. You can see after the main domain, there is extra text written, which is index.php. It should not be there, but it should be something like this. Medihouse.online then forward slash shop, right? 
so that needs to be fixed from here you just need to select this post name and then after click on save changes that's all you have to do and now the entire link of this particular page will be changed let's refresh it here we go so now that index.php has completely been gone and this is the perfect url which is 100% seo friendly as well now let's go back and we have to copy the product page category link so here you need to hover on products then click on categories so we have total three product categories available to copy the link of this pizza product category just hover on this view link right click and then copy link that's it now go back onto the elementor and here in the pizza section just paste that link so this is the exact page link of the pizza product category just close it duplicate it now here we can put burgers and here we need to change the link of burgers so go back onto the product category page here it's time to copy the link of burgers page click on copy link go back onto the elementor and here we can simply paste that link in the same way we have to duplicate it again and then we can change the text to dessert and i think the link should be this one copy link and then paste all right after that we need to jump on the styling part then click on the icon we have to change the icon color so let's make it a little bit gray color okay i'm just copying this color code from here now we can go on to the text here we can match the text color with the icon color so let's paste the same color code okay they both are of same colors now and we can change the typography so here we can set it to rescue and then you can increase the font size from here after that we can simply click on publish then again you have to click on add condition and here you have to must select include option and then all product archives at last click on save and close this page is still not ready yet i have just published this page in order to save the work that we have done so far now let's go ahead and we can put some kind of static text just below this banner image so duplicate this inner section delete the inner image okay and here we can duplicate this heading and just put it over here now click on this plus and here we have this heading widget just drop it inside it and here we can type something like all fresh foods are available 24 by 7 you can customize this text as per your need then after go on to this style and here we can change the font color to black and then we can change the font family as well let's make it roboto slab and we can control the font size as well now the text and the upper image are too close so go on to the advanced uncheck this margin link together value icon and then add some top margin so there will be extra space okay after that we have to display the products so click on this grid icon and here these are the archive products just drop it below this heading like this okay so all products that you have created into your wordpress backend will be displayed automatically in this section now on the left hand side we can duplicate this inner section again then delete the inner content and here we can take an image widget this is the image just drop it now it's time to upload an advertising banner so this is the advertising banner just put it over here insert media it will be displayed over here again click on this column icon then go on to the advanced and here we can set the padding to zero like this also we have to set this image size to full okay now let's take one more section as well click on this one column section and here we need to choose an image widget just drop it over here it's time to upload another banner image this one click on open okay insert media now this appears over here so you can put some kind of offer banner on this shop page make the size to full and alignment should be center at last click on update now let's go on to our front page and we can refresh our shop page so this is how it looks like you can see we have customized the shop page right now we have put some kind of offer banners over here if you would like to add some kind of curve over here that can be done with the help of border radius option so let's go back onto the elementor and here we need to select this inner section then go on to the style and here under the border 
we can see this border radius just increase the border radius and the corners will be curved i'm just making it to 15 and in the same way you have to go on to this image option go on to the style and we have to set the border radius to image as well let's make it 15 okay in the same way go on to the settings of this intersection and here firstly we can go on to the style then go on to this border make the border style to solid then border color should be a little bit grayish type okay like this and then after we can set the border radius let's make it 10 pixels now you can see the bottom image i mean the bottom inner section and this border are completely close to each other so what we can do we can go on to the advanced and then increase the bottom margin so there will be some kind of extra space then after we have to add the border radius to this image as well so go on to the style under the border type here we can set it to 15 now let's click on update again one more thing we can do over here go on to the settings of this particular inner section then again a style and here we can go on to the border let's make it solid then we can set the width to 2 pixels and here we can set the color to CD CDs and we have to put hashtag just before it okay and we can set the border radius to 15 also they are too close so let's go on to the advanced and we can set some kind of top margin over here as well okay at last click on update let's go back onto the front page and we can clear the browser cache once again here you go so now you can see we have the rounded corners and this page looks much better so this is how you can customize the shop page as well. You can put as many as content on this left sidebar and uh, this is the dynamic field. So whenever you create a new product into your WordPress backend, that product will automatically be displayed on this shop page. Now, if you can see over here, the products are too close on the left border. So what we can do, we can increase the inner padding of this particular section. Let's go back on this section. We can increase the inner padding. So let's increase all the padding at once. 30 pixel is fine let's click on update and then we can refresh our front page so i'm just clearing the browser cache here we go so now this section looks perfect now let's open a product this one let's click on it so right now if you can see over here this page has so many information so many options for the user to select but this page isn't looks good at all so let's go ahead and we can make a custom product page that will look much better so go back on to your wordpress dashboard now here we need to click on this hamburger icon and we have to click on exit to dashboard so the wordpress dashboard will be opened now again hover on this template and then you have to click on theme builder all right now it's time to design the custom product page that will be the single product page so here we have to choose the template for single product let's click on it okay just close this pop-up again we need to take one section just click on this plus and we can take this section now we can divide this external section in two columns so right click and add one more column it's time to reduce the width of the first column just reduce it to 40 percent so we are going to take the ratio of 40 by 60 now in the first column we can take an inner section so this is the inner section just drop it over here and we can delete this second column now in the first column we have to display the product images so on the left hand side you can see this is the product images widget just drop it in the first column after that in the right column we again need to take the inner section so this is the inner section just drop it over here and then we can delete the second column now firstly we can display the product ratings so these are the product rating just drop it over here i'm not going to change any kind of settings right now we can change the settings later on then click on this grid icon again and we have so many woocommerce based widgets available that we can use inside this section so after that we can choose this product title that will be the product name now let's change the font color and font family so here we can go on to this style and text color should be black okay then go on to the typography and here we can choose the font style to philosopher okay and we can set the font size to 20 pixels after that let's click on this grid icon again and we can put the product price just below this title so this is the product price just drop it over here and again we can change the color of this particular product price so let's make it black okay and we can set the font size to 15 pixels now let's click on this grid icon again and it's time to display the short description so this is the short description just put it over here 
okay so this is the product short description we can go on to the typography and here again we can choose the font family to philosopher so these fonts looks good on this single product page then again click on this grid icon and it's time to put this add to cart button so people can click on this add to cart and they can place the order now it will automatically fetch all the details all the variations and everything okay let's click on publish then again add condition and here it is automatically selected include on products page let's click on save and close so this work will be saved permanently it's time to refresh our front page so this is how it looks like now let's go ahead and we can make few more customizations so this page will look much better we can add some borders over here so go on to this right column this is the inner section go on to this inner section setting and here go on to this style then this is the border area make the border to solid and here we can set the border width to 2 pixels also we can set the border color to hashtag #cdcdcd that is the color code and also we can increase the inner padding so none of the content will be close to the borders of this particular inner section let's make it 10 pixels and then click on update okay it's time to refresh our front page i think i need to clear the browser cache here we go right so now in this way we can start customizing the entire single product page now this space is much empty so let's go ahead and we can display some more content over here we can go on to the elementor and just below this section what we are going to do just duplicate this inner section okay now we can delete this existing inner content now click on this plus and in this particular section we can display the product matter so right now it shows view in line let's make it stacked so it will appear something like this then again click on this grid icon and here we have product content just drop it this is the long description of this product we can also change the font styling from here let's make it philosopher okay and we can make it dark black color also we can increase the font size from here let's make it 16 pixels right this looks much better so now we can take one more section over here okay inside this section we are going to take an another inner section just drop it delete the second column now in this column we are going to put this products related just put this widget over here it will automatically fetch all the related products to this particular single product now here we can jump on the style and then scroll down this is the title settings just make the font color to black and we can set the typography to philosopher as well okay this looks good after that scroll down we have so many other settings also available like for the button settings and rest of the things and this is the setting for the heading let's click on it now here we can set the color to dark black so related product is turned to dark black and then we can change the typography from here philosopher okay that looks good it's time to click on update also one more thing we can go on to this inner section setting then style and we can set the border as well let's set the border to 2 pixels and we can set the background color to cd cd and cd also we can increase the inner padding so let's increase it up to 10 pixels then after click on update and then we can clear the browser cache of this particular front page okay so this is the single product page and we have designed it perfectly it looks good in this way you can also display your own custom content onto the single product pages this is really very easy with the help of elementor so far i hope this video is helpful for you please do not forget to subscribe the channel and push the bell icon now let's go ahead and we can play with some kind of woocommerce settings so click on this exit to dashboard option then here we have the woocommerce now click on this settings from here we can change the currency we can set the shipping price and rest of the things now on this page we can do some standard settings of your woocommerce plugin so under the general tab you can provide your store address this will be the physical store address where you are located right now so i'm just leaving it as it is now here you can see selling location are you selling the products or the you know fast food pizza to all the countries or you would like to limit it to just a specific country so here you can select sell to specific countries so let's say i'm just willing to sell my products only in india so i can select india from here so none of the people outside india will be able to place the order on my website 
and then in the same way i have the options shipping location ship to all countries you sell to this is already selected so automatically this rule applies to india only then we have the options enable taxes and calculations so it's completely up to you whether you would like to enable it or not then we have the coupons option whether you would like to enable the coupons or discount code option or not so of course this is really a very good feature for increasing sales then we have the currency option as i already told you earlier right now i have set up the currency to indian rupees from here you can set the currency to your own country's currency just like united states dollar so you can type over here united states and these are us dollars so all the products will be displayed now in us dollars currency let me show you i can refresh this page and let's clear the browser cache here you go so now you can see the currency has completely been changed these are the us dollars now let's go back after that we need to jump on the payments tab from where we can enable the cash on delivery option we can integrate the payment gateways into our website so here you can see this is the cash on delivery option if you would like to enable the cash on delivery option just enable it first then go on to this setup option and here you can change the text as per your requirements i'm not going to change the text right now let's go back if you would like to integrate the payment gateway that can help you to accept the payments through credit card debit card net banking etc then i have already created a separate video you can just click on the link at the very top right corner on this video and you can learn how exactly we can integrate the payment gateway into your wordpress website the link has also been provided in the video description as well in the same way we have the taxes section as well let's go back onto the general and i'm going to enable the taxes section let's enable the taxes okay then click on save changes now this is the tax section enabled so if you would like to integrate the gst part the tax system into your woocommerce website then go on to this video the link has been provided in the video description that's a complete separate video on the entire tax system that you can easily add into your woocommerce website now let's jump on the email tab and here we can set the admin email address so here you can see this is one of my email address when someone places a new order you can see over here this is the email triggering option new order the details will be sent on to this email address in the same way if someone cancel the order then the email will be sent on to this admin email address and failed order will also be triggered on the same email address if you would like to change this email address you can simply click on this manage button and here you can put your own email address this will be the admin email address all right let's go back now let's scroll down Here you can see when someone places an order then of course he will also be receiving a confirmation email from your end so this is the from name field i mean this will be the name of your business of your website so user or customer can understand from where he has received the email and this will be the from email address i mean the admin email address should be here now in this box we can put the header image we have to put the exact path of the logo so how you can get the logo path it's really very very simple just go on to your front page this is the logo just right click on it and here you can see copy image link just click on it the link of this particular logo has been copied go on to this section and just paste that link that's all you had to do so this is the exact path of the logo now this is the footer text that goes in every email when someone places an order on your website so you can customize it as per your requirement either you can put it over here something like thanks again or you can put your own custom text and this is the base color of your email of the header and the footer rest of the things at last you can simply click on save changes okay so email part has also been done Now let's go ahead and we can start creating the footer of our website. Footer is the very bottom area of your web page that has some kind of links, some credits, social media icons and a few more things. So I have one more website and the footer looks really good to me. Let me open it. Okay, so this is a different theme and I have a footer over here. You can see this is the footer and that looks really good to me. So let's go ahead and we can create a footer something like this. Let's go back onto your WordPress dashboard. Now here again we need to just go on to this templates and then click on theme builder just like header we have to make a custom footer as well so here we can see this is the footer let's click on this plus now let's close this pop up it's time to take a section and we can change the background color of this section to red now let's go ahead and we can take an inner section inside this section so here we have this inner section okay this one and we need to divide this inner section into three columns so let's add one more column 
now in the left column what content we have to put this one sign up for newsletter and then we have some kind of text over here so let's copy this entire text and this is basically a kind of icon box so let's go over here and click on this plus and here we can search for icon box this is the icon box just drop it in the first column okay first of all we can change the position of the icon to left like this and then we can paste the content over here and this sign up for newsletter needs to be come at the heading position so in this box we can put that text then after we can move over here and icon library we can uh, choose the icon envelope this is the envelope let's click on insert and it will appear over here now let's jump on the styling tab and what is the color of this okay white color so let's move over here icon color needs to be white okay like this and then we can jump on the content this also needs to be white and this color needs to be white as well cool now let's control the spacing in between the description and the heading so this is how it looks like and we can set the vertical alignment to middle after that we can reduce the width of third column now in the middle column we have to put a form so here we can simply search for form that is form this is the one just drop it over here like this simply delete the name field and the message field we just need to keep this email field also hide the label so this is the label option let's hide it and here we have input size that is small you can set it to medium or large that's completely up to you okay i'm just going to make it medium now we can jump on the buttons tab and here you can change the button text to subscribe like this you can type your own text over here now after submit what needs to be done entry will be collected and admin will receive an email now let's click on email so when someone fill up this form his email will be sent on to this email address this is basically the admin email address so here you have to put your own email address and this will be the subject so i can uh, type over here new subscription from and then selling pizza online blah 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 you can also change the settings over here this is the from email so here you can put the admin email address then from name this could be the website name at last we can jump on additional options and here you need to select custom messages so after submitting this form what actually the message will be displayed so here we can type let's jump on the third column and here we can put the social media icons so these are the social media icons just drop them over here and now we can align them to right let's jump on the style tab you can put your links over here i'm just going to make the color to custom and then we can set the primary color to transparent like this okay now it's time to align the content to vertically middle so go on to this column setting and here vertical align let's make it middle in the same way go on to this column and make the vertical align to middle that's it now let's take another section okay next section is something like this first of all we have to make the background color to dark so let's move over here then on the style tab we can make the color from here after that we have to take an inner section so this is the inner section just drop it over here and we can add one more column now in the first column these are some kind of content first of all we have to put the heading that is information contact so here you can put a heading this is the heading just put it over here and here we can type contact information okay alignment should be left then we can jump on the style and from here we can make the color to white then let's move on to this typography option and from here we can reduce the font size okay after that we can use a divider line so this is the divider line just drop it below this heading okay and we can reduce the width from here after that we need to align it to left and then we can change the color from here so let's make the color to yellow okay like this and we can also reduce the gap now let's add the contact details so we are just going to use the icon list this is the icon list widget just drop it below this divider line now on the left hand side we can see these all are the items first of all we can put here the number so let's say 0123456789 and here we can choose the phone icon so here you can search for phone insert okay after that we can put over here email address so let's say my email address is saddam kasim at the rate hotmail.com and then we can choose the icon from here so that would be envelope this is the email icon and then after i can put my address 
so here i can put the address like 123xyz lane riva road satna mp and then 48501 and here we can put the map pin icon so let's type here map pin okay this is the map let's insert it cool now let's jump on the style tab and here we can go on to this icon firstly we need to make the icon color to yellow like this so icons are visible then after we can make the text color to white let's make it white okay now this section also looks perfect once it's done then what we can do we can simply duplicate this entire column let's delete one extra column from here and then we can delete this icon list here we can change the heading so let's put it over here customer service and now here we can put the pages link you can simply go back to your wordpress dashboard from this option and then simply go on to all pages section then add new and add all the pages once you have created the pages like refund policy terms and conditions shipping policy and uh, like gdpr there are so many legal pages once the pages are ready then you must be getting the unique link of those pages so what we can do actually over here we can again duplicate this icon list and then put it in the second column now it's time to edit the list items firstly let's close the next two okay now here we can put the page name just like disclaimer and here we can change the icon so let's type over here a n g l e that is angle we can use this icon and here we have to put the disclaimer page link so from where we can get the link just go onto your wordpress dashboard under the pages click on all pages i have already created the blank pages so this is the disclaimer just hover on it and here is the view link right click and then copy link so this is the link of this particular page let's go back onto the elementor and here we can paste the link after that just close this tab in the same way we can add more tabs and here we can change the text to terms and conditions and here we can change the page link so let's go back and this is the terms and conditions right click copy link go back over here and then paste it so one by one we can put all the legal pages link over here okay at last we can either click on publish or update i have already published this page just to save my work so what we can do we can simply publish it but remember when you will be publishing from here then you must be seeing this kind of pop-up so you have to add the condition include and then entire site after that you have to click on save close now in the last column we can put the company logo and some description so let's click on this plus we can jump on the image widget just drop it over here then we can go on to choose image upload files okay i think i have already uploaded the logo in the media library so we can reuse this logo let's click on insert media okay after that we can align this logo to left like this and we can set the size to full now just below it we can add some description so let's click on this grid icon and here we have this text editor let's drop it over here okay now in this box we can paste some kind of text so i have just copied some dummy text now we can jump on the style here we can change the alignment to left text color should be white so it will be better visible and from here we can change the font style so let's make it roboto slab okay like this after that we can update now let's go ahead and we can add one more section over here that will be the copyright section so we can take this section and then after inside it we have to take an inner section just drop it over here okay first of all outer section color needs to be changed so i'm just going to make it dark black let's jump on the style and here we can make it dark black now in the first column we have to put the copyright text so this is the text editor widget just duplicate it we can drop it inside the first column and here we can change the text so it is copyright 2022 and then we can put the site name selling pizza online or you can put your own custom text over here now in the last column we can put some other text so the best way is always just duplicate the first column okay delete the last column now edit the text inside it so here we can put something like powered by and then you can put your own name over here just like saddam kasim i think the text would be built by and then saddam kasim we can change the alignment to right okay 
and if you would like to link your name with some of your existing website you can simply highlight your name then here's the link icon just click on it and then put your website address including the http or https so i'm just going to put my website address over here so in case if someone click on my name they will be redirected onto my website after that go on to the outer section outer column settings just jump on the advanced and here set the padding to zero after that go on to this inner column and here also we can set the padding to zero now make sure to align the entire content to vertically middle like this in the same way we have to do the settings in this column firstly let's make it zero and then vertical align should be middle now it's time to add some top padding because this content is strict at the top so here we can increase the top padding 15 let's do the same with this column as well so let's make it 15 okay after that let's click on update and it's time to refresh our front page here we go so now you can see this is a beautiful footer that we have created just now in this way you can create the footer you can create the custom header into your wordpress website and you can list out the products on the shop page or uh, you can sell the products very easily and also we can customize the entire single product page you can integrate the payment gateway on your website and there are so many things that you can do and these really doesn't need any kind of a special programming skills as you can see i haven't written even a single line of code if this video was helpful please do not forget to subscribe my channel and like this video and if you want me to create a specific video on your topic just let me know in the comment section i will definitely make an upcoming video on your topic till then thank you so much and have a wonderful day